So I've been thinking over this whole cash-in TV show thing, and I can't really say I legitimately fault it too much. I mean, yeah, as a show it's subpar, but it's no worse than any other show with a similar mentality. And honestly, it probably did sell the games more, bringing Qbert to the legendary status he is today. I'm Qbert, and I've got all the right moves. I've got the legs, too. First an arcade game, now my own home video game. I'm ready for anything. Staying away from creeps like Ugg and Coily takes a quick mind and lots of fancy footwork. The longer I hop around, the more they're out to get me. Ugh! When they said fame would go to my head, they weren't kidding. Now for all popular systems. Not easy being Hubert, but it's fun. Granted, that commercial had more of a budget than the actual show did, but doesn't that pump you up to play some cube hopper? Oh, wait, <laughs> sorry. Uh, that's something else I'll be getting to a bit later. So after going through our level with the mountains and our level with the Indian reservation, I guess, uh, the next step is to, of course, go and head to rooftops. And a little less than ironically, you get to turn them orange, so there's that. The big thing about the triplet stages in general is that they're really quite diverse in their environments. We go through so many different worlds and different ways to explore the universe of Qbert, uh, if, if you want to call it any kind of a consistent universe at this point, and it's just quite interesting to see how the developers were able to take all these different worlds and all these different potential themes and make them all fit within the world of, for example in this case, the triplets. Every triplets level feels like a triplets level, and furthermore, every triplets level, as diverse as they get, complements the music perfectly. And this song that, you know, I still consider to be a remix of High Hopes, is a really uh, solid uh, bridge between the six worlds, which are, to be fair, completely unrelated from one another. So this is also where we get to see quite a few more interesting patterns, rather than having rocks fall after us or something that we've seen before. Now we've got tires, and there's just something, again, just not to say the tires act too much differently than the octopuses did or whatever, because they do actually follow a path very similar to that of the, uh, well, the way that the octopi back in uh, Zila's stage did. So. I mean, to, to that extent, I guess it's not really that special or whatever. But uh, th there was something nice about just suddenly having it be tires, and it feels right for the level, if that makes any sense. This tire up here, you'll actually see, follows a set path, but it, it feels like it's taking sharp turns and going straight, and uh, it's a little hard to exactly explain why I find it so interesting, mind you, but I do like it. Now this bonus stage here, I don't even know how you're expected to find this. I found it cut by complete accident because I was a moron as a kid and jumped straight down the hole right in front of me. I don't even know if there's supposed to be a way to actually know that that's there. I guess you're supposed to know from that Zila stage that where you had to hop on the cube that was behind the thing. That had a camera pan to help you. This is nothing. This is... Uh, I don't know. I guess that's part of why this is considered a <clears throat> puzzle game is that... <laughs> ah, it's certainly puzzling! The other thing you'll start noticing is that, as a general rule, uh, as these stages are getting further and further in, you'll see, especially in the case of the triplets, that they're gonna get more and more expansive. Uh, this level is a lot bigger than pretty much anything we've seen before in the triplets dimension. And it's quite fun to see just how they can expand upon a pre-existing formula. Uh, not to say that the levels are just gonna get bigger, because that would get boring pretty fast, I'd say. But there are quite a few expansive stages that we're gonna see uh, in the duration of this part, I'd even dare say. Um, beyond just making the stages bigger, though, they also get more interesting and complex. Uh, here, we're introduced back to the concept of level 3 blocks. That is to say, instead of just turning them one color, if you were to step back on any of these platforms after already changing their color, much like Red Triplet here is doing, uh, you're gonna turn them back to the color that they were originally. Much like, you know, level 3. Uh, the good thing about Adventure Mode is they never really are too punishing with this. Uh, 
it, it's kind of interesting to see how they play out in the later stages. For here, it's just a fairly straightforward thing. If you fill in each of these gaps, the, the root appears to one of the triplets, you can then collect all three triplets here if you're going for score. However, if you fill in that first 4x4 uh, four four grid that uh, up top, uh, then Coily's actually going to come, and being chased by a snake on tiny level 3 platforms is not fun. Trust me, we're going to get there, and it's not going to be good. But in the meantime, uh, this is a... I, I don't know why you wouldn't have access to level 2 platforms at this point. Um, I'm not sure if they just put in the score requirements really late into the game or something, like way late into the game's development, but for some reason, uh, they still don't think you're gonna have uh, access to level 2 platforms by now. Uh, I think even if you did a low score run, you'd have it by this point. But for some reason, you don't have to fill in the level 3 platform section over there, although it is kind of interesting just how they program that. We'll come back to see that later, though. In the meantime, next up is our uh, fourth area for the triplets. Now, being new a New Englander, I happen to really like the snow! Safety first! I'm Batman. So this is a fitting stage for me, because, uh, Yeah, snow, woo. Anyway, uh, nothing too major here. Uh, we can see the rocks coming back. If I'm not mistaken, you can actually hop underneath the rocks when they're at that peak of their bounce. I, I want to say that's the case? Uh, don't concern yourselves with it too much. It's not really like it matters anyway. There's no point where you'd be cornered unless you could do that. Although that would have been a really interesting gimmick for a level. These slides, uh, fun little things that uh, are basically just one-way gates. Uh, they'll come into play later, and uh, I think they do a- This is one of the few gimmicks in the game I think they do a really good job showcasing uh, to their fullest extent. So, uh, needless to say, you can't walk under these rocks. <laughs> uh, again, just an interesting new idea is to just have these rocks rolling like this. Uh, there's a lot of things like this where each area has very specific programming, and it seems actually to me kind of like a waste of talent. However, they're fun and they're memorable. I will remember that particular puzzle area for quite some time. Speaking of puzzles, actually, there is a, uh, this is probably one of the most complex puzzles in the game, come to think of it. Getting into a bonus stage later on requires that the platform up top remain the same color of platform as the ones that we see beyond the little blockade thing. It's a long story, but we'll get there. In the meantime, uh, I kind of want to talk a bit about Coily's programming, actually, because that is something that I've been meaning to address. Coily, in the classic levels, was programmed to specifically chase directly after you. But in adventure mode, if he always chased directly after you, he would get stuck a lot more often than he actually does. Instead, he's programmed to actually go in a pretty roundabout way to find you. A lot of times you'll find him actually cutting you off, so he's not just chasing after you, he's outright cornering you. And I think that's a really interesting twist. Anyway, as you saw there, the green triplet was able to escape because we uh, changed the platform to the right color while the green triplet was still on screen. Because of that, we're not going to be able to unlock the bonus stage here. But that's okay, I I'm, I'm wanted to go back to the stage anyway just to cover the more stuff about it that I could. Because, again, I, I really do like this stage. I'm not a big fan of ice levels, but when there's no ice physics and they actually do some pretty cool ideas with the gimmicks, I think it actually has a lot of potential to it. So I, I I don't mind this one too much. Now we can see that Yeti dude up there, and he just kind of chills there. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of having him there is, but it's an interesting addition. Anyway, we can't we can't get in there, and it kind of frustrated me when recording this because I wanted to get in there. I wanted to show you the bonus stage because, I'm, to the best of my knowledge, I've shown off every bonus stage I know exists up until this point. As 
not saying much, mind you, because I still think there's quite a few hidden goodies in this game I'm not aware of, but whatever. So this is uh, more what I had in mind when I said the stages are going to get a lot more expansive. Or the gimmicks are going to at least be more trying, or they're, they're going to do interesting things. And uh, this is a perfect example of that. Really nice uh, f way to finish off the snow level, I think, is by pretty much having you scale a bit of a mountain of a, of a maze. I I'm not exactly sure what to call Qbert levels, actually. Would you consider these a maze? I mean, I, I guess you'd call it a maze. It's a maze, a puzzle, a pyramid, but it's not a pyramid. Whatever. Block arrangement. <laughs> This is a pretty good one to finish off this particular stage with, just because it is that large and that challenging, and I don't know. I get a ki pretty big kick out of stuff like that. So before we completely abandon the ice stage, I'd like to just cover one more thing. Um, that bonus stage. Uh, I'm not exactly sure if there was a set order to doing this in particular, but since we can't get back up after we've already uh, come down both of the slides, uh, or at least have gone up both of the sides, I should say, um, the big key here is we're going to have to find some way to get to that upper platform and change it to the right color without the green triplet getting involved. And the way to do that is very simply just to head up here after you've already completed the maze. So having done that, it looks like absolutely nothing's changed. And you'd be right in saying that, mind you. Um, I think there was supposed to be something with the Yeti, although I'm not entirely sure, because I don't get what the Yeti's doing anyway. He's just sitting there derping. So, uh, yay for that. But, uh, before we enter the bonus stage, the one thing to note is that uh, the red triplet over there, yeah, he's helping you out by filling in squares, so if you're of a speedrunning mind, it might be a good idea to stay out of his way. However... Um, you don't get points for the, the platforms he changes the color of, so he's still technically an enemy and a hindrance in a lot of ways. You know, despite the fact that he's supposed to be your buddy and helping you out and ah. Anyway, as for this bonus stage, this is probably one of the only bonus stages in the game that I'm not actually sure how to do right. Uh, to this day, I've never actually completed this one perfectly. Um, I made a habit of basically heading through every bonus stage to the best of my comprehension. Yeah, no, I can't do that. So we're just gonna leave that one stone unturned over there. Not too big a problem, I hope. Uh, <laughs> don't throttle me, please! I, I, gee. Anyway, that one aside, pretty close to completion. Something that you can try if you ever happen to find this game. But that there's really not much else to cover for this stage, so uh, I guess one last thing to show is that if, I believe it's if you let the green triplet survive up until this point, then all three triplets will show up here, and uh, they'll all be acting like free-roaming Sams. They do change their function from stage to stage. This is one of the more frustrating ones, so if you really want to make things hard on yourself and get the highest score possible, I guess, is actually the mentality they're going for, uh, basically all you really have to do is uh, <laughs> keep the green triplet alive and go to the bonus stage. Anyway, so the first level we scaled up the side of a mountain that turned out to be a volcano. Well, I think it's pretty showing from some other stuff in the game, but the stages were not originally supposed to go in the order that they actually did. Uh, granted, in, in a game like Hubert, there's really no set order you would need for stages like this, but something tells me that this stage was supposed to directly follow the mountain climbing stage, but difficulty, among other things, uh, probably prevented them from being able to actually fulfill that. So instead, here we go. Lava bubble things. Instead of rocks, we got lava balls chasing after us now. Um, I, I still want to give a lot of credit to the fact that in uh, th throughout the triplets, they keep things interesting, even just visually. Um, rather than having red balls chase you all the time, we've got, in this case, lava balls, and in another case, rock balls, and it's just, I I'm really glad they were actually so willing to be able to have, uh, some variety in what is technically a pretty samey and redundant game. 
Anyway, these lava balls actually have a gimmick that for some reason glitches out occasionally. But the idea behind the lava balls is that they're supposed to hop down until they've hit the lowest platform, similar to a purple ball actually. You know, the one that's to turn into Coily. Only instead of turning into Coily, they hit the designated platform or low, lowest point that they're supposed to stop at, and they're just supposed to kind of freeze there. And you can see, in this case, that they've melted on three specific platforms, blocking our way. Now, that could be really frustrating if you don't know that they're there, because that lava takes a really long time to melt away. And especially in this one stage here, that could take a while for you to get the pattern down so you know what to avoid and where. It's frustrating, not necessarily bad though, because the other thing that this stage offers is the power-up that I picked up in the first maze puzzle pyramid thing. Um, and that's the little steam icon, I think that's what that's supposed to be. Um, would have been better if it was the Steam logo, but whatever! Uh, that little Steam icon there, what you can do with that is you can use it to pretty much cause all the lava balls on screen to evaporate. Be they in ball form, be they melted, it doesn't matter, they all just go away into a puff of steam, I guess. I'm not exactly sure how that works entirely, they should just turn into igneous at that point, but I'm not gonna complain too much. For some reason, that rock isn't actually there. I don't know. Whatever. This next area, though, is actually a pretty cool gimmick. We can see the rocks, uh, which are returning because... I don't know. Atari wills it. But they always fall in the set pattern. So, the big step is to just get in mind with that pattern, scooch ahead when you can, and just keep up with them. And I think that's a pretty fun stage. Just that gimmick, the one with the rocks in the last stage, that just rolled forward. That's the kind of interesting little gimmicky levels that I really enjoy, and Qbert has those in spades. Um, on the subject of really expansive levels though, here we've got a pretty just big block of stuff to change. This may actually be one of the single-handedly hardest puzzles in the game, just because you've literally got everything here except dug in wrong way. You've got the lava balls, you've got the green balls, you've got the extra lives, you've got Coily, you've got uh, Slick and Sam, did I already say that? Probably. And it, it's just overall, it's, a, it's an arsenal that you really do have to watch out for. And furthermore, this is kind of like embodying what I like about Adventure Mode so much, is that it feels very Cubert, despite the fact that it's not entirely what we originally came to Cubert for, or are used to seeing in Cubert. That's, that's pretty nice, I actually really enjoy that fact. Um, it would be nice if the green ball didn't get rid of the music, but whatever. So yeah, this stage is pretty good. It is worth noting, though, that this is the final area of uh, Stage 5, making Stage 5 one of the shortest in the game, outside of, I believe, some of Zila's areas that also only had five, uh, <laughs> five platforms, or five puzzles to complete before the end of the game. I guess part of the reason for that is just because this one last puzzle is so hard that they decided that they should really just use that as a counterbalance to say, you know what, we're done. Psh, done. Um, I don't mind too much, though, because I, 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 I always do co enjoy coming back to stage five. The next stage, though, I think I might need a little bit of help with. So when we come back in part six, expect me to not be alone with a text bubble. See you then!